Hello there, World of Tankers. I'm Drew Dole Splits, and today I'm going to be talking about the T26 E5 Sheriff. If you've been paying attention in the store at all, you'll have noticed it has come into the game with the price tag of 10,000 gold, which is a lot cheaper than the last couple times it has come out. The first time it was in crates, which cost me I think around $100 to pick up, which kind of annoyed me judging that I'm not a huge fan of the tank. And then it came out the second time for 15,000 gold, and now it is the price tag of 10,000 gold. So it keeps and keeps on dropping. So usually that is not spectacular news for the tank. But today I'm going to be giving you a rundown on the statistics, the armor profile, how I play it, and whether or whether or not you should be sticking this tank in your garage. So make sure to stay tuned. Getting straight into the statistics, the first thing you'll notice on this tank is that it actually has some really good numbers for it. First of all, it has a base damage per minute of 2,515, which places it among one of the top three heavies in the game at tier 8 to have such a high damage per minute. Not to mention, 221 millimeters of standard pen, that is really good as well. You're really not going to struggle to penetrate any of the opponents you're coming up against. And if that's not enough, load the premium, 265 millimeters of heat pen is plenty to get through pretty much any target you are aiming at. And if you're like me and you put on calibrated, that's going to go all the way up to 292, which means even some of the tier 9 heavies like an ST1 or an E75, you're easily going to be able to go through the turret, the lower plate, even sometimes the upper plate. So the penetration is not an issue on this tank. However, one of the starting issues that I personally am not a huge fan of is the alpha damage. 240 is not a crazy amount of that. And that can become part of an issue when you're running this tank up against a vehicle, let's say like an IS-5, and you pushed it in a heavy position, and that IS-5 is side scraping. Now, of course, you'll pen the IS-5, you got plenty of pen to go through him, but he'll pen you back for 400, and then he'll back in the cover. So effectively, you'll be getting half of the damage onto him than he's going to be hitting you for. And if you're up against tank destroyers that are now dealing 460, 640, the more alpha damage the tanks have, it's really going to start to hurt you if you can't hit them back with the amount of shells you wish. So that's one thing on the alpha damage that I'm not a huge fan of. However, if you take a look at the gun handling statistics, with a base aiming time of 1.72 seconds, that's actually the number one out of every tier 8 heavy in the game. And as well, dispersion at .308 is excellent for a tier 8 heavy tank. So it's got very good accuracy, especially when rotating the turret after shot. Dispersion factors are excellent there as well. And it's got 10 degrees of gun depression. And as most American tanks do have that, it also has an extremely strong turret. I'll be getting into the armor profile. But 10 degrees of gun depression is going to make it flexible on pretty much any terrain, any area you go. You're easily going to be able to brawl with the medium tanks, the heavy tanks, bounce some shells, and that's something that's really, really nice. As well, 20 degrees of gun elevation, you're not going to have to worry about people getting a height advantage on you. That's something that really this tank never, ever does struggle with. Turret traverse speed, though, is not spectacular at 30.37 degrees a second. And with the traverse speed of 32.8, that's not too great either. And that can become part of an issue for this tank because while it actually is pretty quick, 40 kilometers per hour forward and 15 backwards, which both of those numbers are very good for the heavy class, when you've got a medium tank getting the side of you, like a T-49 sometimes, or I don't know, any medium tank, Type 59, if they track you, and this is an American tank, which means they don't have the strongest track wheels, you can easily stop this tank dead in its spot and get behind it, shoot HE into it. It's got one of those weak American rears. So that is one issue I have found with this tank, especially with vehicles like the T-92. It doesn't really hold up when it is being flanked. But as I said, it's actually got a very nice top speed of 40 kilometers per hour. So when you look at the statistics of this tank, they're actually very, very strong for a tier 8 heavy. Excellent damage per minute, excellent gun depression, aiming time. The dispersion values are perfect on this tank. It's very quick, even reverse, it's still 15 which is going to give you the ability to shoot somebody and back up really quickly. Although, one of the issues I do find, again, with 240 alpha and such a quick reload on this tank is, yeah, the damage per minute's great, but something I like about bigger alpha is when you're in a tank that, let's say, like an RHM and you do 640, you're pulling out, shooting somebody for 640, and you're immediately backing up, and then 15 seconds later, you're pulling out again. This tank, you are constantly pulling out. Five seconds later, six seconds later, you're constantly pulling out to keep shooting the enemy to maximize your damage per minute. And when you do that, obviously, you're exposing yourself more to enemy vehicles. So that's one thing I'm not a huge fan of, is constantly having to pull out to shoot the enemy tanks if I don't know what's spotted on the map, if I think there could be a tank destroyer. So that's one thing that I'm not a huge fan of. But overall, you can see that the statistics going for this tank are very, very healthy. 
when looking at the armor profile of this tank, it's really not the most spectacular. Because if you're thinking about it, yeah, 190 millimeters is pretty thick against some tanks at tier 8, but a Tiger II, IS-5, pretty much all tier 8 heavy tanks that you'd be fighting in this, are easily going to overmatch your frontal armor. And not to mention the lower plate on this tank is only about 158 millimeters thick. So if you're running this tank, let's say on a map like Desert Sands, and you pushed it to town and pushed it against the heavies, you would really, really struggle because it just doesn't have the armor to effectively bounce shells. And when you try and side scrape in this tank, yeah, that's not a viable option either. You can see just angling this tank at around a 22 degree angle, the frontal track wheel only about 192 millimeters thick, which means that not only is your track wheel going to be destroyed, you're also going to have to use your repair kit and you've lost the hit points in the whole process of doing that. So that's one really big weakness. And even if you shoot a little bit above it, you'll see that it's even weaker at only about 170 millimeters thick. You never really want to try and side scrape in American heavies, they just don't have the armor to be able to do it. So that is definitely a big weakness on this tank is the front track wheel and pretty much the entire frontal armor. However, looking at that turret, you can see it is pretty much all red and that is the redeeming factor on this tank. You can see it's about 280 millimeters effective and if you're loading heat, it's gonna be about 350. So you're never ever going to be able to pen through that mantlet and that takes up about 70% of the turret. Now, of course, you do have these little itty bitty cheeks sitting out right next to the mantlet, about 214 millimeters, but the chances of hitting that are really, really hard. As well, as soon as you hit a little bit to the left of that or to the right of that, it's about 250, ranging up to 300 millimeters thick on the edges of the turret. So it's extremely hard to penetrate. And I've had a fair share of people think, well, I'll just shoot the cupola on it, it's not very hard to pen. Well, you can see that cupola is sitting at around 250 millimeters effective. To be honest, I'm not sure why they put a cupola on it in the first place, but shooting at that cupola, unless you're in a tank destroyer or you've got an amazing amount of pen, I definitely wouldn't suggest it, especially because this tank is 10 degrees of gun depression. If you're using that gun depression, you can see this tank becomes a monster on ridgelines, and that's how you want to run this tank. You can see the upper plate armor is now around 230 millimeters thick. And while that's not spectacular, again, tier 8 heavies are easily going to be able to overmatch that armor, especially with premium ammo. You load premium, you can see, just right through the upper armor. So it's definitely not going to bounce a lot of tier 8 heavy tanks or tier 9s, but if you're hiding the hull and you're using your turret armor, you can see it is insanely thick to penetrate. That gun depression makes the turret a lot harder to pen. Still, gun manly impenetrable, you can barely hit that cupola, it's now about 270 millimeters thick. So it's an extremely hard take to go against if it is in a hull down position. And that's sort of how you want to run it. For my personal playstyle on this tank, it's actually a very tricky vehicle to run. Because you have to know what to do, where to go on all the maps. You have to know a lot of knowledge when playing this tank. Because, as I said, its armor will not hold up against top tier heavies. However, if you find a good haul down position where you can hide the lower plate, even sometimes the upper plate, just your turret sticking out, you can fight even tier 9 opponents, easily penning them with your premium, and just rip them apart with your crazy damage per minute. And that's one thing that this tank does really good at, is as long as you hide that hull armor, it's going to be doing great against any opponents. But as I said, if you're pushing this tank aggressive and you're on a map like Desert Sands, and if you go town, you are going to be demolished, because 240 damage just isn't really a lot to keep the enemy from pulling out and shooting you. If I was up against the Sheriff and I was on an IS-5, I wouldn't really mind losing 240 hit points to shoot him back for 400 and then wait another 15 seconds, pull back out and do it again. It's one way to really easily counter this tank. And because of that, it's a very, very uh, unforgiving vehicle. You do not want to make mistakes in it. You pull out against a tank destroyer and you've lost, bam, half your hit points. It's not like an IS-5 or some of these big heavies like a Tiger II where if you pull out and you make a mistake, you might bounce the shell. This tank, if you're going up against opponents that have decent pen, you are not going to bounce it. So the main way I would definitely suggest to run this tank is against mediums. Because as you know, mediums, first of all, don't have spectacular penetration. Now there's certain tanks like the CDC that have 212 mil, but this tank has more damage per minute than the CDC, which is crazy. And as I said, most tier 8 mediums don't have great pen. A tank like the Mod 1 only has 175, Type 59 180. As I showed you guys, the upper hull armor on this tank is about 198, 190 millimeters thick, which means that you can just run this tank pretty much flat on against most mediums, wiggle your hull, do some little sporadic movements, and you can actually bounce about 50% of the shells, but as soon as they load premium, which sometimes a lot of people do is they just spam premium at it, the armor does really fall apart. And again, even some medium tanks, like the Mod 1, does more average damage 
than this tank does. So you still have to be careful, but with the crazy damage per minute, with that amazing gun depression, you can easily tear into most medium tanks and not really worry about even being penned back because it just does a great job at it. As I said before, the mobility is not too shabby on it. 40 kilometers per hour forward, you really don't have to worry that much about getting into position late. Now, unfortunately, you do spawn on the heavy side, so sometimes when I am running this tank and I'm on a map like Middleburg and I'm trying to go up that hill, it doesn't have the best power to weight ratio, so I'm going up that hill, getting ready to go there, and sometimes your medium tanks are already dead or they've ran away, and then you're sort of screwed. So, again, you have to be very, very smart when running this tank. This is not a beginner-friendly vehicle. You have to know the map positions, know what's a good situational spot for this tank. It's definitely a great tank, but only if you know where to run it. For the asking price of 10,000 gold, I personally still don't think it is worth the price tag. It's just a little bit too expensive for my personal opinion on the tank. And the reason for that being is because it's not a very fun vehicle to run. First of all, it has a low average damage, and I'd rather run a tank that has a big gun that does 460 damage, 400 damage, like an IS-5, IS-6, than a tank that does 200, because you can't really push it on the heavy side. And when you're pushing this tank on the medium side, yeah, it does do very well. In fact, it does really, really well if you know where to push it on the medium side and you know what to do. But by then, I'd rather just run a medium tank like a Type 59 or a T-54 Mod 1. And by then, those tanks are more fun for me. They've got higher alphas, they've got different types of playstyles, they're mobile, they can do other fun stuff where this tank really can't do that. And that's the issue I find with this tank, is it's just not a fun vehicle to run. While I do have some of the best statistics out of all of my tier 8s in the game in the T26 E5, I personally run this tank maybe once or twice a month, and that's it. Because it's not a fun vehicle to run. As I said, it's not ridiculously quick, it doesn't have a great amount of penetration, doesn't have a great amount of damage per shot. There's nothing that really draws attention to this vehicle, like a tank like the Scorpion G, or the Type 59, or the Mod 1. Those vehicles are really fun, they earn really good credits, and as well, you have a lot of fun playing them. This tank, you just have to be so cautious, so careful, you're always paying attention, where you just might want to have fun in this tank, earn some experience. I definitely feel that you can get other tanks for a much better price tag and have a lot more fun. Now that's my personal opinion on this tank, I definitely won't blame you if you do pick it up, it is a very strong tank, especially for the more experienced players, you'll do a lot better in this tank, but as I said, for my personal opinion, it's just not my cup of tea. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, if you absolutely love this tank, you hate it, let me know. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button down below, if you absolutely hated it, you know what to do. If you're not subscribed already, please make sure to do so. We are soaring up in subscribers, already like 8.3 thousand or something like that. So I can't thank you guys enough for all the support you've given me. I hope you're all happy and healthy out there. Corona is getting worse and worse still, which is just crazy to believe. But I hope you're all doing well out there, and I'm hopefully seeing you in the next video.